Greetings, friends. Uh, I have some special friends with us today that uh, wanted to say something before we got started. Friends, what did you have to say? Uh, be careful of the virus. Okay. Um, why do you watch news? Oh, you heard it here. Why you just black? Be careful of the virus, and why do you watch the news? Well, we can talk about that later, but say, uh, friends, just uh, say hello and goodbye. Hello, goodbye. No, goodbye. Hello. Bye-bye. Hello. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you for joining us today. Ow. Welcome again. Um, <clears throat> as you can tell, my children are full of energy today. It's kind of a rainy day outside, and so they've been inside a lot today. But uh, hopefully things will be a little bit quieter from now on. You might hear my daughter singing in the background or... Yeah, they're outside right now, so if my sons come back in, they might be loud again. But hopefully, it'll be quiet enough as we get started on Unit 10. Woohoo! Our last unit. I'm excited uh, to finish this up with you guys. Um, it's been a long journey, uh, and we're almost to the end. And because of that, I've added a few little extra sparkles and razzle-dazzle uh, for you as we get started. All right, so... Um, as we get started with Unit 10, let's talk about our goals. Our first goal uh, for this unit is will be to compare celebration customs. Celebration, think party. Things we like to uh, um, remember. And so like uh, <clears throat> for Americans, Christian, uh, for Americans, Christmas, Easter, Valentine's Day, we celebrate, we have party. Halloween, we have party, right? End of year, we celebrate, we have big party, we eat together. And customs are things that we do um, every year. It's like a habit, but uh, it is more about um, remembering uh, family or remembering an idea. Um, and so, uh, so with Christmas, we have min, uh, my family has many customs, um, things that we do every year. That uh, uh, it's those are ways that we like to remember um, the holiday. Uh, my wife's parents have big party. That's a custom that they have. Or um, we, uh, my family, my wife and children, we eat cinnamon rolls and blow out candles uh, on uh, Christmas morning. Um, and we do that every year. So that is a custom for us. So well, we're going to compare customs, celebration customs. So uh, maybe my family does it one way and your family does it a different way. And so we're going to compare and see how those are similar and maybe how those are different. And so that's one unit goal. Our second reading our second unit goal will be to read a recipe uh, and uh, for our bakers and people who like to cook. The recipe, you know what that is, hopefully. Uh, it is the plan for how to make uh, make something, like make a, make a cake or make warbot. There's a recipe that tells you how much flour, how much cream cheese, how much pistachio, how much honey, and it tells you the the correct or right amounts um, so that you can make delicious warbat or baklava or uh, sabuti or lapathok, right? Um, there's a, a, a list, a plan that tells you all the ingredients you need and then how much so that it, you make really yummy food. And so that's called a recipe and we're going to talk about how to read a recipe. And then our final unit goal for this, our last unit, will be to write about a favorite holiday. So be thinking about what is your favorite holiday? Um, for my students from Syria and Iraq and Pakistan, you are you are in a kind of I think you're in, you would call this a holiday, but you are in a season of fasting and celebration, right? Um, so maybe this is your favorite holiday. Uh, for many Americans, Christmas is a favorite holiday, or Easter, or Halloween, right? So be thinking about what your favorite holiday is. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. For lesson A, our lesson for today, we're going to <coughs> talk about wedding customs. 
Uh, many cultures have their own uh, wedding customs. In America, we certainly have our own wedding customs. Um, and I would be interested to hear about uh, some of your wedding customs. And to help with discussion about wedding customs, uh, I thought I would share some of my wedding pictures <clears throat> so that you could see um, what uh, I would say a traditional um, wedding is like in America and uh, I'm not saying that my wedding is like every other wedding was like every other wedding but uh, it was pretty traditional it had many of the um, many of the pieces you would find in a common American wedding so uh, I thought I would share some pictures um, <clears throat> here in the top left corner you see me with my mom and one custom uh, in a wedding ceremony is for the groom, that being the man getting married, to walk his mom uh, to her seat. Um, and then uh, also is for the father of the bride, so the father of the woman getting married. Uh, he walks her down through the aisle, he walks her down the aisle and um, brings her to the man he she is going to marry, uh, and then he gives her uh, to the man to marry and here are three pictures kind of showing you that uh, first uh, me walking my mom to her seat second my wife's dad walking her down the aisle to give her away and then uh, you see a picture of him giving her away so that's part those are a couple the few customs that we have in our wedding um, you see uh, two ministers uh, usually it's one but we had two um, here uh, in the big picture on the left, uh, you see the wedding party, and you kind of see what the wedding ceremony looks like. Um, on the left side are, well, let me start in the middle with the most important people, the bride and the groom. My wife uh, has on a white dress, a long white dress, and I have on a tux, and I'm in the middle, and we're standing before the pastors. Um, and then to my wife's left, uh, you see um, women. Uh, those are her friends who are called bridesmaids. So my wife is called the bride and then her bridesmaids. So uh, they are women who help the bride. Or uh, in other times when, um, that when it was more, they needed more help, the bridesmaids would help uh, with getting the bride ready. In this case, they are friends there to support and um, support my wife and support us in marriage and to um, be a, to say, we support you and we are going to help you in this marriage. And then on, on my right side uh, are a group of guys and those are called groomsmen. I am called the groom because I was going to be married and then the groomsmen uh, serve the, they are like the bridesmaids. They help me uh, get ready for the wedding. Um, and then they also are there to support me and in that moment, but also as we go through marriage and hold me accountable, help me to be a good husband. Um, and then you see uh, all of this is happening um, in front of a lot of people. Uh, so uh, this is kind of what it, this is what a traditional American wedding would look like. Um, the size may be different in different weddings, but this gives you a good picture. Um, also another custom uh, in uh, American wedding is after you uh, say your vows, which are promises, and you give each other a ring, um, you do share a kiss, which you'll see uh, in the upper right hand corner under my picture, of my life picture. And then in the bottom right hand, um, the husband and wife, new husband and wife, walk out in front of the crowd together. And then everyone follows behind. And so I hope you are able to see some of the customs that are to American wedding. Um, after the wedding, a lot of times there is a party, or um, one of our vocab words for this 
uh, unit reception uh, where they welcome the husband and wife for a party so that people can speak to them and celebrate them. Um, at the reception, there is the cutting of the cake, which you see on the left. Um, you also see my baby face, no, no hair. Yes, it's true. Sometimes, very, very few times, I have no hair on my face. But you see, uh, see us cutting the cake. Um, you see, also, there's uh, sometimes there is a first dance where the husband and wife dance for the first time as husband and wife. Um, Sorry that you can't see my face, but it's not much to look at. Um, I promise that's me under the under my live picture. And then finally, at the end of the reception, at the end of the night, the guests gather and they send out the husband and wife into their new life. Um, sometimes they throw rice. At our wedding, they threw rose petals. Um, but what I wanted you, what I want you to see, is just what this is. What uh, a typical uh, American wedding looks like. What does weddings look? What do weddings look like in your country? Um, I would love to hear that. Uh, maybe you guys uh, could text about what a wedding would look like uh, in your country. So um, let's get going uh, with now that we've talked about um, wedding customs and specifically American wedding customs. Let's use that context to think about our uh, unit. So uh, on page uh, 112, uh, go ahead and look there, turn there. On page 112, uh, we see a couple pictures. Uh, and think. And remember, our, we're our, in this first lesson, we're focusing on wedding customs or wedding traditions. So what do you see in picture number one? Uh, <clears throat> picture number one, what I see, well, before I say that, take some time, take a few minutes, and picture one and two, and write down a few things that you see um, in picture one and picture two. And then uh, think about how do these two maybe are similar, are different, um, and after you do that, uh, come back unpause the video and we'll keep discussing. So pause now, write down a few things that uh, you, you see um, in the pictures and then we'll come back together. Okay, I paused as well um, just to make sure you make you think, think about pausing. <clears throat> but here are some things I see in picture number one. Um, we, uh, I see uh, a man and a woman uh, dressed in red together, uh, and maybe uh, their their clothes are different than the two men um, in uh, to the right. And they the two men are wearing business suits, but the husband and the man and woman are um, wearing maybe more traditional or their culture's clothing. Um, perhaps. Um, the man and the woman are both smiling. Uh, uh, there are chopsticks on the, the table um, and it looks like there maybe will be a meal. Uh, maybe it is an Asian culture, maybe Chinese or Japanese, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> or maybe it's Burmese, who knows. Uh, there's chopsticks um, it looks like the man on the far right with the red tie has uh, three envelopes that he's handing to the man in the middle. Um, everyone looks happy. Uh, and so maybe the man on the right is giving a gift uh, to the couple and the man in the middle is uh, uh, helping in some way. Um, picture number two uh, is um, we see two people walking out maybe from a wedding and I say wedding because the woman is wearing white she's holding flowers the man's in a tux and usually that is a sign of a wedding um, and people are throwing confetti 
which is like little pieces of paper and streamers, which is the long lines. Um, again, everyone is happy. Uh, people have a camera and taking pictures. Um, I think it's interesting in both uh, pictures, uh, if they are both wedding, um, wedding pictures, uh, both women are holding, um, both women are holding um, flowers. Uh, and so maybe um, flowers are common in all wedding customs. I don't know. I would be interested to hear from you about that. Um, <clears throat> so those are some things that I see. And maybe this is a compare and contrast, so how they say it is similar and how they differ uh, in wedding customs. Um, so in a minute, uh, we're going to listen and actually hear what uh, what is being said. And what I want you to do is at the top of page 123, I want you to listen for who are the speakers and what are they talking about, okay? so. Um, I'm going to pause in a second and we're going to listen together uh, and I want you to listen for who are the speakers and what are they talking about. 10. Free time. Page 123. Exercises 2A and 2B. Hi, Kathy. What are you doing this weekend? Oh, ton. I'm glad you asked. I was invited to Bao and An's wedding. It's Saturday night, and I haven't bought them a gift yet. So? Well, I don't know what to get them. They aren't registered at any stores. Registered? What's that? Well, for many American weddings, the bride and groom sign up with a gift registry service at a store. They make a list of what they want, and then people can go to the store or the store's website and buy something on the couple's list. I've never heard of that custom. At a Vietnamese wedding... Guests just bring cash in an envelope. Really? Yeah. And during the reception, the bride and groom walk from table to table, greet the guests, and collect the envelopes. If I were you, I would just take an envelope. Okay. Thanks for the advice. I guess customs are really different across cultures, aren't they? That's for sure. Do you know what really surprised me the first time I went to an American wedding? No. What? As the bride and groom were leaving the reception, the guests threw rice at them. What a waste of food. Where does that custom come from? Oh, that's a really old tradition. Rice is a symbol of fertility and longevity. So throwing rice represents the hope that the couple will have children and live a long life together. That's really interesting. Yeah. So, Tan, what else happens at a Vietnamese wedding? Well, for one thing, it's traditional for a Vietnamese bride to wear a red dress. Red? Not white, like in this country? That's right. In our culture, red symbolizes good fortune. In fact, one of the traditional foods at a Vietnamese wedding is red sticky rice. Interesting. Let me ask you something else. My invitation was just for the wedding reception in the evening. What about the ceremony? Well... Traditionally, the ceremony takes place at the bride's home with just the family and close relatives. It's usually held in the morning. The reception in the evening is actually a huge party with all the couple's friends and acquaintances, lots of dancing, and lots of food. Be prepared for a seven- or eight-course dinner. Wow. I guess I won't eat anything beforehand. So, will I see you at Bao and An's wedding? I wish I could go but I have to go to my nephew's graduation party. I hope you have a great time. I hope so, too. I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, now that we've listened, uh, let's talk about some of the things that we uh, heard. Who are the speakers and what are they talking about? So, uh, we have two speakers. We have Kathy and Ton. What are they talking about? Kathy was invited to a wedding, uh, and it happens or it is a Vietnamese wedding. And as the custom is with many weddings, Kathy wanted to get a gift for the couple getting married. Uh, but uh, she, like many Americans, wanted to get a gift from the registry or the list of gifts that the, the bride and groom sign up for at a store. But 
uh, she could it was too late and she's talking to her friend Tan who is also Vietnamese and they began talking about how at Vietnamese weddings a couple goes from table to table and they give cash um, <clears throat> and so uh, what the story uh, is about is the difference between American weddings and uh, Vietnamese weddings so we already see that Americans we want gift registry Vietnamese they just they couple everyone gives cash to the married couple uh, in America uh, Kathy said that they wear a white dress and Tan said in Vietnamese weddings they wear a red dress um, uh, Tan talked about uh, being surprised that they throw rice um, at the American wedding he thinks this is a waste and Kathy explains that the rice has meaning um, of fertility meaning you can have babies uh, and longevity living a long time um, and they also uh, at a Vietnamese wedding talk about um, how they um, serve red sticky rice which also has special meaning and including to the red dress and then um, the, uh, also the Vietnamese wedding it starts in the morning and then they have big dinner at night with seven to eight courses of food uh, so a big meal with eight different um, seven to eight different types of food being served um, <clears throat> and so the story ends by uh, Kathy thanking Tan for sharing about the Vietnamese and then um, uh, he talks about she asks if Tan is going and Tan says no because his son is having a graduation party so that's our story I hope you heard some of that um, if not even listening to my voice I hope you were able to hear uh, the things that I heard so now I want us to listen again and this time I want us to listen so that we can complete or fill out this chart on top of page 123 uh, you have three columns in the first column you have gifts use of rice and then dress color and then in the second column you have American customs so for instance with gifts you American custom is to register in stores um, and you will listen for the Vietnamese custom what it by custom what, what is normal what do most people do um, for this thing and what is the pattern uh, for gifts in America <clears throat> uh, and then listen for the use of rice in America and then the use of rice in Vietnam the use of the or the dress color custom in America and the dress color custom in uh, Vietnam okay so uh, I'm going to play it again for you and listen uh, as many times as you need to uh, just back the video up uh, and listen until you have the uh, completed the, the the chart okay so here we go I'm gonna play it for you now unit 10 free time page 123 exercises 2a and 2b hi Kathy what are you doing this weekend? Oh, Tan, I'm glad you asked. I was invited to Bao and An's wedding. It's Saturday night, and I haven't bought them a gift yet. So? Well, I don't know what to get them. They aren't registered at any stores. Registered? What's that? Well, for many American weddings, the bride and groom sign up with a gift registry service at a store. They make a list of what they want, and then people can go to the store or the store's website and buy something on the couple's list. I've never heard of that custom. At a Vietnamese wedding, guests just bring cash in an envelope. Really? Yeah. And during the reception, the bride and groom walk from table to table, greet the guests, and collect the envelopes. If I were you, I would just take an envelope. Okay. Thanks for the advice. I guess customs are really different across cultures, aren't they? That's for sure. Do you know what really surprised me the first time I went to an American wedding? No, what? As the bride and groom were leaving the reception, the guests threw rice at them. What a waste of food. Where does that custom come from? 
Oh, that's a really old tradition. Rice is a symbol of fertility and longevity. So throwing rice represents the hope that the couple will have children and live a long life together. That's really interesting. Yeah. So, Tan, what else happens at a Vietnamese wedding? Well, for one thing, it's traditional for a Vietnamese bride to wear a red dress. Red? Not white, like in this country? That's right. In our culture, red symbolizes good fortune. In fact, one of the traditional foods at a Vietnamese wedding is red sticky rice. Interesting. Let me ask you something else. My invitation was just for the wedding reception in the evening. What about the ceremony? Well, traditionally, the ceremony takes place at the bride's home with just the family and close relatives. It's usually held in the morning. The reception in the evening is actually a huge party with all the couple's friends and acquaintances, lots of dancing, and lots of food. Be prepared for a seven- or eight-course dinner. Wow! I guess I won't eat anything beforehand. So, will I see you at Bao and An's wedding? I wish I could go, but I have to go to my nephew's graduation party. I hope you have a great time. I hope so, too. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to keep it interesting for you by moving my little face all over the screen so you have to keep paying attention to where I'm at. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, now that you've listened again, uh, let's go over uh, what we heard in our story. <clears throat> all right, so um, as far as with gifts, number one, uh, the American custom is to register in stores. And the Vietnamese custom is to have a cash in the envelope. And if you remember from the story, the married couple would go from table to table uh, and the people at the table would give cash in the envelope. Okay, what about use and rice? What is the American custom? They would th people throw rice and rice at bride and at the bride and groom. Um, <clears throat> if you remember back to uh, my wedding, I said we threw rose petals. Um, <clears throat> many people do not do rice anymore because birds come and eat it. It's bad for the birds. It's bad for the environment. So many people do not use rice anymore. But the custom has been to throw rice at the bride and groom. What about in Vietnam? What is the custom for the use of rice? They eat red sticky rice instead. Okay, what about dress color? Number three. What is the dress color in America? It is white. And what about Vietnam? Red. Okay. I hope you're able to get these. If not, try again. Um, keep listening. Uh, and great work. Uh, even if however many times it takes you, great work. Uh, let's move on. We're going to look at uh, section three after you listen. Um, and going to read and complete the story. Um, before we do that, uh, let's go over um, some the words in the yellow box. Uh, our first word is acquaintances. Acquaintances are people uh, you think of it like friend, um, but not quite friend. Their acquaintances are people you know only a little. Um, or you don't know a, a lot about them. Um, so acquaintances are usually, you know them more than a stranger, but less than a friend. Um, <clears throat> so maybe you see their face every day, you pass, if we are at school, you go by them in the hall, maybe you smile at them, um, and you know their name, and maybe where they are from. That would be an acquaintance. Uh, a friend would know your life story. Uh, they would know maybe where you're from, know your friends, your kids' names, things like that. Um, so acquaintance, more than a stranger, so you know their name, maybe, and you are familiar with them, you smile at them, maybe you wave at them, but they're not quite a friend. They're not someone you talk to all the time or you share life things about with them. So that's an acquaintance. Number two is fortune. Fortune has many um, ideas, uh, similar meanings, but in this sense, in this context, fortune means to 
uh, wish is good luck or blessing, well, not well seeing, but well being. Uh, it's a type, type mistake on my part. part. Uh, good luck, blessing, well being, or wealth in the future. To have fortune, to wish fortune for someone is to wish them good luck, good blessing, well being, or wealth in the future. So that in the future, these good things will come to them. Um, <clears throat> that's how we're using it in this context. Uh, you might talk, uh, you might be more familiar with fortune with like uh, someone who has a fortune has a lot, a lot of money. In this case, we're just talking about someone having a good life in the future, having good luck, blessing, well being, or wealth in the future, or all of those things. Um, our second word is reception, and we talked about that some already. A reception is a gathering or party to celebrate a person or event. So after the wedding, we had a big party where all the people at the party came, or at the wedding came for a party, and the bride and groom, the husband and wife, were able to meet the people, talk to the people, um, and just have a lot of fun and celebrate. So a reception is a gathering, a party to celebrate a person or event. If uh, if we had been able to have graduation, if for the nations would have had graduation, so we would have had ceremony. After the ceremony, we would have had reception. We would have had a party where we celebrate you guys for the work you did this year. Right, so the reception would come after the graduation ceremony. So reception is more like party. Our second, our next word is symbolizes, which means to represent or show the meaning of a thing. So if you think back to our story, what were the things? There were several things that symbolize things. <clears throat> um, rice, uh, sim it had it symbolized it had it showed a meaning in America. Rice meant longevity and fertility, right? Um, in America, the white dress means um, uh, means purity. In Vietnamese culture, the red dress means good fortune, uh, good luck, good blessing. Um, so it, you take something like a red dress or rice, red rice, sticky rice, or white rice, take that and it points to or shows or makes you think about another meaning uh, or uh, an idea like red dress equal me symbolizes points to wishes good fortune so red dress symbolizes good fortune in america white dress symbolizes points to purity of the bride it means she is clean she is pure Right, um, <clears throat> white rice in America points to, symbolizes, represents longevity and good life and fertility. Right, so symbolizes means it show something shows or points to another idea. Our next word is courses. So uh, courses has many different meanings. Uh, if we were in school, you were taking an English course, right? So we sometimes we talk about courses as class. Here, we're talking about courses, talking about a meal, and a course is a different part of the meal. So a cor one course is one part of a big meal. Um, <clears throat> trying to in American culture, we have maybe we have appetizers. There's one course where you have little food you eat with your finger, but it's not it's not food that fills you up, but it's just merely a taste, one small thing. But then you have maybe, um, think about it this way, an uh, easier way. A lot of times you have a salad, you have your main meal, your meat and vegetable, and then after your meal, you have dessert. So there you have two courses, right? Um, so maybe, uh, you might have a three course, you would have a salad, uh, a meat dish, and then a dessert, right? Uh, how many courses were there in the story? 
uh, seven to eight. So seven to eight small, small dishes, small parts of the meal. So like all the meal, all the different courses make one meal, but you have eight different parts. So you would have eight different types of food. Maybe you would have a soup and then a salad and then um, maybe a coffee and then the meal and then the dessert and maybe a second dessert, right? Those are all different parts of the same meal and each of those parts is called a course. The next word is looking forward. It means ex you're excited about the future. You're excited about something that is about to happen. Um, <clears throat> Summer is here, almost here, so I am looking forward. I'm excited about summer. Um, many of us are looking forward uh, to when the pandemic, when the COVID-19 virus is finished and it is safe for us to have normal life again, right? Many of us are looking forward. We are excited for that time when we can get together and be together um, and be friendly and not have to wear a mask and not have to stand six feet apart. We are excited about that time when all that is finished, right? That is the idea of looking forward. Excited about something in the future. Our next word is registered. Um, when you, beginning of the semester, you registered for class, means you came, uh, you filled out a piece of paper with your name, phone number, address, uh, and some maybe where you are from and stuff, information about your work. Uh, when a man, a husband and wife get married uh, before they register, so they go and sign up at a store for gifts that they would like for people to give them. Um, and so to, for them to be registered means they, are, they have signed up at a store for gifts um, that they would like to be given, American custom. That's just the way it is. Um, and Vietnamese to just give the cash. Maybe easier to give the cash. I don't know. But that's what we do. <clears throat> Our last word is tradition. And that means the giving of ideas or habits from one generation to the next. So like I said, with my wedding pictures at the beginning, the traditional wedding, um, the pieces that make it traditional it means that happens from in, in most weddings it passes down from my parents wedding or my wife's parents wedding look very similar to what my wedding did the the groom the husband walks his mom sits his mom the the father of the bride the father of the wife walks her down the aisle he gives her to the groom um, they the husband and wife exchange promises, vows, they share a kiss, they walk out, and they have a party, right? Um, those pieces of the wedding, they get passed from culture, from generation to generation. So my wedding looked like that, my parents' wedding looked like that, my children's wedding will look like that, right? And so we're, we're following the same pattern from generation to generation. That is a tradition. Um, Tradition, custom can be similar meaning. Um, my, for my family, our tradition at Christmas, Christmas being a big time in America and easy to talk about tradition, the reason why I keep bringing up Christmas. Um, tradition at Christmas is Christmas Eve, the night before Christmas, my wife's family, uh, all her cousins come to her parents' house and there's big party. And then Christmas morning, my family, my wife, my children, uh, we get together, we have breakfast and then um, have time uh, opening presents. And then we go to my wife's house, parents' house for um, time with her parents, right? So that, that tradition happens from time to time to time. And this has been happening, um, this is what her mom did and then it happens again, probably happen when my children are older as well. And so it gets passed from tradition to tradition. And as I'm talking about it, maybe custom difference between custom and tradition. Custom is what maybe my generation, my immediate family does, but tradition goes from 
goes to the generation before and maybe to the generation after. And so it's not just, it doesn't, it goes beyond just one family unit, but it, it happens over many generations. The same thing happens from time to time. So if my, my customs for Christmas, if my children begin to do them when they are adults, then they become my, my customs, then they become traditions. Um, so that might have confused you more than helped, uh, but tradition, the idea of this practice or idea or habit that gets passed from family, from generation to generation. Um, so hopefully those words are helpful. And what we're gonna do with those words is to complete this paragraph. And I would like you to do that now. So in a moment, after I give you the directions, pause the video and try to complete the paragraph using the words in the yellow box. Um, and when we get back, I will play the, uh, after you finish, um, you will be able to listen and check your answers. And then uh, we will finish our time together by me going over the answers with you together. So pause the video now and try to answer the questions as best you can. 123. Exercise 3A. Kathy and Tan are talking about wedding customs. Kathy is invited to a Vietnamese wedding, and she is surprised that the bride and groom are not registered for gifts at any stores. In contrast, Tan is surprised by the American tradition of throwing rice at the bride and groom. Next, they talk about clothes. Tan says a Vietnamese bride wears a red dress because the color red symbolizes good fortune. Then Kathy asks why she was invited only to the wedding reception, not the ceremony. Tan explains that traditionally, the ceremony is only for the family. The couple's friends and acquaintances are invited to the evening reception. In fact, Tan says the evening party will include seven or eight courses of food. Kathy says she is looking forward to the wedding. Now that you've had an opportunity to complete the paragraph on your own uh, and listen to check your answers, if you have not listened to check your answers, go ahead and do that. Back the thing up, back up the video so that you can check your answers. Let's uh, check the answers together. <clears throat> All right, I'll read. Follow along. Uh, Kathy and Tan are talking about wedding customs. Kathy is invited to a Vietnamese wedding and she is surprised that the bride and groom are not registered for gifts at any stores. That means that they're not signed up uh, for gifts at any stores. In contrast, Tan is surprised by the American blank of throwing rice at the bride and groom. Mm, what, which one of our words means to um, do again and again um, at every wedding. That's right, tradition. Tan is surprised by the American tradition of throwing rice at the bride and groom. Next, they talk about clothes. Tan says a Vietnamese bride wears a red dress because of the color red, blank, good, blank. Okay, so we're talking about the red dress has a different meaning. So the red dress, the red color red points to or shows something. So the red dress symbolizes good. And we want, <clears throat> we're thinking about what do, what at all weddings we want good things for the bride and groom. We want good life, good health, good, uh, good wealth. So we want good fortune for the bride and groom. Then Kathy asks why she was invited only to the wedding blank and not the ceremony. So think back, we said graduation ceremony and after the ceremony there would be a party. So another word for that would be the reception after the wedding. Tan explains that traditionally the ceremony is only for the family. The couple's friends and blank are invited to the evening reception. Friends and what? what's another word we talked about for friend, close to friends but not quite a friend, that's right acquaintances are invited to the evening reception. 
In fact, Tan says the evening party will include seven or eight blank of food. That's right, courses of food, different parts of the meal. <clears throat> Kathy says she is blank to the wedding. If you remember back to the, the, the listening exercises, she said she was excited, so she is looking forward to the wedding. Okay, I hope that went well for you. Uh, if, if it didn't, um, maybe erase your answers and try again, and then listen again. Um, no real homework uh, today, but if you do want to text me uh, or text on our group chat, uh, some of the traditions or customs uh, that are for weddings that are different from American weddings or even from what we talked about in the story. Um, uh, one of you is from Vietnam. I would be interested to know if you agree with this story. Uh, let me know. Tell me about your wedding. Tell me, uh, did it was it like mine? Was it different from mine? Uh, yeah, and we'll have a little discussion on our chat board. I uh, hope you're well and hang in there. We have four more lessons, uh, maybe five more videos, something like that, four more videos, but we're almost to the end. Uh, hang in there. You're doing a great job, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.